Hi guys, Swift here, and today we'll be looking at a new tool in 3D Canvas, the Dungeons and Interiors tool. It's on the sidebar here, with this square brick symbol. Click that, and you'll get this window up that has a bunch of options in it. The main ones you'll probably be using are these first two, Add and Subtract. If we click and drag with Add selected, then we create a rectangular room. And then if we drag more, overlapping shapes, then the rooms connect together. Very simple, easy to use. Subtract does the opposite. Click and drag shapes to cut them out of a room. For example, we just cut corners out of this room here. The knife tool cuts holes in the walls. For instance, if I drag that across this wall here, I cut an entrance into it, or if I drag it across more rooms here, I just cut them out of the building entirely. This is great for making entrances into other parts of the map, or other floors or other buildings, that sort of thing. And stair creates a staircase of the specified height with the shape you drag out. Like say if we make it three blocks long, or if we make it more blocks long, it comes up with the same height which would be this setting down here, dynamically adjusting the shape of the steps as it goes. Below these four primary tools are the different shapes you can do. The first one is rectangle, second one is ellipse, so you can click and drag roughly circular shapes or add them to rooms. There we go. You can use the polygon tool to create arbitrary straight walled rooms. So you click and hold with this tool and then right click to put corners in see here and this works the same way as the other ones you can just arbitrarily add rooms together and it will just dynamically reshape the room and spline does a similar thing to the polygon tool but it tries to curve the walls I'll just show you by making this here as you can see the walls kind of have a smooth curve along roughly where I've clicked and dragged. So if you want to make any arbitrary shape that's got a curve, but it's maybe not a circle, or it's maybe an irregular sort of shape, that would work perfectly for that. Spline particularly works great with this option here, rough. You've got smooth for the walls, which I've been using here, and then rough. Let's set the theme to, say, realistic stone, cave. That's very nice. And then use the spline tool here to draw a shape. As you can see here, the rough option makes the walls very kind of uneven and curved to look a bit more like natural caverns. So you can use this to create any sort of underground cave, texture them how you like, just like any other wall really. You can then of course use the knife tool as normal to just cut bits out. Or the subtract tool to, you know, remove bits from it. Get some very interesting shapes this way. You can also independently either create just the walls or just the floors with these buttons at the bottom. Like for example, if I set it to just the floors, create a shape, then I've got a patch of floor or just the walls. You know, depending on what you want to do with that. Anyway, that is a super quick demonstration of what the tool does and what sort of things it's capable of uh, done. Next, I'll show you making a map with this and uh, the prop browser as well. Just to kind of show off how easy it is to use these new tools. To do that, I've went and gotten Matt Colville's old Adelian tomb map, cut out the dungeon itself, and then just dropped it into Foundry as a tile. Um, I've doubled the scale so that parties can actually fit inside, like each of these squares here is actually two by two squares. The quick backstory of this particular map is that it's the tomb of an ancient order of knights that has recently been occupied by goblins and the like with a secret chamber in the back containing the sarcophagi of some of the most revered members. So if I was to use these tools to make this dungeon, the first thing I'd do is open up the Dungeons and Interiors tool, pick a theme, I think interior bricks is fine, and then just start drawing on the map. And quick as that, you've got the floor plan done. There's supposed to be a secret door up here in the back though, Luckily, if you drag a line with the tool, you just get a wall that has the same height, obviously, as the thing you've set here, and the same thickness. So what we can do is just select this like it was any other tile and move it into position. 
once it's in position, I'll just open up its tile configuration, set the is door flag to secret, and the door state to locked. And now it's a secret door ready to use. It blends in okay, though it'll be a lot less obvious once the place has proper lights and decoration and stuff, so we'll see how that goes. The walls themselves though, I think they look alright, though I think for a tomb the walls should be more kinda bluish. So what I'll do is I'll select the walls, open up the material browser, and then look for something I like better. Let's have a look in stone, say. Oh yeah, stone 05 looks pretty great. What I'll do is do that to the secret wall as well, just so it matches, obviously. And that is the walls done. Next step for convenience is to lock the walls and the floor. So to do that, you just right click on them and then click this little padlock button here. That'll stop them being highlighted when you mouse over them. Just makes it easy to work with. And now for the main structural elements of inside the dungeon. For this, I'll use the prop browser and then just use the search fields in there to find what I'm looking for. Let's start with the stairs. This one will do. In fact, I'm feeling like the walls are a little bit too tall, so what I'm going to do is open up the Dungeons and Interiors here. I'm going to set the height to 200, and then I'm going to add a little cube to here, which will reshape all the walls. And then I'm going to use the Subtract tool to cut that bit off. And then I'm just going to select the walls again. Actually, no, wait, what I'm going to do is set the theme back to interior bricks. Add a little bit to it. Subtract that extra chunk. And then select the wall again and put the texture back on it there. Now, as you can see, the whole dungeon's walls have been decreased in size a little bit. Does also mean I'm going to have to redo this secret wall over here. Let me just do that quick. Perfect. Back to the stairs. There we go, ideal. Next is the doors, I think. Let's open up the prop browser again and search for doors. I kind of like these door frame objects, though obviously I'm biased. What I'll do is I'll put those in each doorway. And then I'll put the door in as well. Let's see, I don't have the matching door around here somewhere. Ah, there we are. With this particular door, what I'm going to do is turn off auto center in the settings here. Which I'll in just a second. And that moves the center point off to the corner here. I'll move it into position. Let me scale it up slightly. What I'll do is open up the 3D settings, set the door type to door leave the door state as closed and then go into the advanced settings and then in door style I'll set that to animated then what I'll do is set the animation angle to I think negative 60 or so that should be good and then let's give that a quick test absolutely perfect and then what I'll do is I'll just copy this door into the door frames Perfect. That is the doors installed. So, in the original tomb, the first room contains an offering brazier in it that pilgrims would come and make offerings into. Let me check the props browser. Got a couple of braziers here. This one looks fine. We'll just drag that into the scene. Put it in the middle of the room. We'll add some finishing touches to that later. The second room contains a statue of one of the prominent Delian knights. The idea is that by reciting a uh, oath to the statue, players can open up the secret door in the back here. So let's see if we can find any pedestals or something to put a statue on. Great. That looks good. And so for the statue, I could use something from inside the asset browser here, like one of these statues. But I've got a bit of a better idea. What I'll do is I will create a new actor, call it the Delian Statue, make it NPC, 
and then drag it into the scene. And then we'll move this guy onto the middle of this platform here. Good. And then we'll open up the token configuration and then use this token browser here. And then let's have a look through this browser and see if there's anything paladin-y in here that we like the look of. This guy, champion, that is absolutely perfect. Great pose for a very noble statue. The next step is to cover up this beautiful painting that's on this mini by selecting a material, let's say leather, and then putting a color on him, let's say a very dark, very faintly blue gray. And there we go, that looks convincingly statue-like. Let's increase the scale to make him larger than life, say 1.5, that's good. And then check disable base so that he doesn't have that circle around him. And now he looks like any part of the scenery. The secret room in the back has some coffins or sarcophagi, so let's open up the asset browser again. These coffins look pretty good, but I figure wooden ones would have kind of rotted away by the time that the party get to some ancient tomb. There we go, these sarcophagi will do quite well. Big stone things. What I'll do is I'll use the ones with the lids off in case we want to open them later. But I'll just drag both of these out into the scene. And then I will just copy these around the room. And there we go, seven sarcophagi ready for the inevitable undead to burst out of them. So that's the map got the main props in there, pretty much ready to go. You could take this and run a session just like this, just fine. I've got a bit of extra time though, so let's take this a little bit further, further with some furnishings. So in this first room, Matt originally described it as being a goblin bivouac, basically where all the goblins have been living. I figure we'll portray them as slightly more organised, so let's throw down, let's say, some sort of cot. A weapon rack, some sort of storage items like a barrel, and a crate. And let's distribute these around the room to make it seem a bit more lived in. Alright, good stuff. For the second room, this would be where their leader, some sort of goblin chief or maybe a hobgoblin or bugbear lives, and presumably keeps the valuables. Let's put in, uh, let's say, a chest, some cages for keeping captives, because of course the party may be here to rescue somebody's daughter, as is tradition, and a table for making plans. Put a good one in here somewhere. And then a more comfortable bed for the chief and his trusted lieutenants. Let's say this one here. Looks nice. It's got legs and everything. And then maybe a bedroll. And then let's use these to decorate the room. And for the tomb in the back, I think the sarcophagi will be doing most of the work decoration-wise, but they'll probably have a place to store a few important bits and pieces, ancient documents, maybe an item important to your party's quest, maybe just a pile of gold. So let's put a few chests in the corner here. Let's say this one looks good. Yeah, that'll do. Alright, so that's the scene looking a lot better, I think. Much more lived in overall. So, again, you could stop here and use this to uh, run a session immediately. Still room for improvement, though. Let's change up the environment. First thing I'll do is set the skybox of the scene to a plain black texture. That'll be in the advanced settings of the configure scene. Got a skybox image and 
We've got one in the Bailiwicky 3D textures folder in MISC, the black square. Though obviously, it's literally just a black square, you can bring your own. And that removes the skybox entirely. Next thing I'll do is use the environment pane to change the HDRI, which will change how the scene looks in terms of the lighting. So let's look for something that's maybe a bit dark, but has a few different colors of lights in it, like this one here. Looks like it might be nice. What about this one? Let's try a few more of these. I kind of like the really intense shadows on this one. Let's get rid of the shadows of the sun, since this is supposed to be underground, by setting the time to 12. And then to make it more look kind of dark or night-ish, let's open up the scene settings again. And then if we go into advanced settings, scroll down a bit, let's set the scene tint to something kind of dark blue. Maybe a bit less blue than that. A bit darker. Or maybe a bit lighter. Let's just fiddle around with it until we get something we like. That's looking alright right there. And then let's set the exposure down to say about 0.8 or so. So 0.79, that's fine. So this is what the darkest shadows in the scene are going to look like. Uh, pretty dark, but still just about visible. Next step is to put in some diegetic lighting, so like torches and things. Um, I've got the Bailiwiki 3D module, of course, so I can open up the Bailiwiki 3D Prefabs compendium and then put down some prefab lights like these standing torches. Quite handy. Just drag those into position. Let's put one in the corner there. Let's put another one in the hallway here. And let's put another one in this room here. further away from the table. No, further away. That'll do. Now, remember, if you're using prefabs, um, once you're done placing it, open up the token attacher UI for each one, and then click on detach all elements, this bin symbol here, and that allows you to delete the token while leaving behind the prop and the fire. Looking good. And let's put a fire in this brazier too. I could make a new fire, but let's just take one we've already made. Like, say, this brazier here. Put it into the scene. And then what I'll do is I'll use Token Attacher to detach the token. And then I'll actually delete the brazier itself as well. And then what I'll do is I'll just move this fire over. Obviously it's not quite the right shape, so what I'll do is I'll open up the configuration on the fire here. Let's make the emitter size a bit bigger. Turn down the count. Set the push Z way down. Let's see what that looks like. That's looking pretty good. Let's turn the scale down a bit more. And maybe turn the life down too. That's looking pretty good, I think. Nice subtle ember effect. And then we'll move the actual light over as well. So we'll turn it down since this is now not a roaring fire. Set that to like 25. Maybe even smaller than that. Now there we go, that's looking pretty good. Things are still looking quite dark here. So the next step would be to put in some non-diegetic lights, or in other words, lights without any sort of visible source. So I'll create a light here in the first room. Let's move it into the center of the room, up a bit higher. And then because I don't want this lit up this brightly, what I'll do is I will change the light color to a dark blue. Keep the size quite large, I think, and turn the color intensity down. We'll see how that looks. A mm, little bit better. Let's make the brightness a little bit bigger. Turn the color intensity up slightly.
Maybe turn the brightness down slightly. And there we go. We can see more of the room, but it still looks dark because of the dark blue of the light. So what I'll do for the second room is I will just copy this light and then paste this one in here. And then I kind of like the idea of this statue here being quite prominently lit. Let's put a light quite close to it, probably into the front of it so that it reflects off there. And there we go. It's pretty obvious that the statue is important without making it too obviously illuminated by, you know, a shaft of light from above or anything like that, while still obviously maintaining that vaguely dark sort of air to the place. For the secret room, we definitely need some sort of lights in here, but obviously it's an ancient sarcophagus, so there wouldn't really be any kind of um, torches or anything here. They would all be long since gone. So again, non jagetic lights are for it. What I'd like to do is go for that sort of undead air and make the light green. So let's make a quite large light and make it a sort of blue-green. And maybe turn the colour intensity down. That's looking pretty good. Let's maybe turn the light down a little bit more. A little bit further. And then let's move it on to this sarcophagus here. Still maybe a bit too bright. Let's turn it down even further. That'll probably do. Got the light intensity down. So I kind of want this to be a quite faint light, but I also want it to cover most of the room. So the way to do that is just to use more lights. So I will copy that and paste it over here. Move it up a little bit. And I'll paste one over here. There we go, the place is now fairly well lit, but in a kind of creepy green sort of way. This might make it a bit obvious that the place is or has some necromantic energy. You could, of course, change the colour of the lights or not even use the lights at all. If the players are bringing torches with them, that would work too. So again, this right here is a ready-to-go map that looks pretty good. Could put some tokens in there and have a good time right away. Though there is a few final finishing touches I'd like to do for underground scenes like this. So with the way lighting in 3D Canvas works, it can bleed through walls, like you can see here. That looks a little bit odd and dispels the illusion that this is an underground dungeon. So something I like to do is use the Create Tile tool and just create a basic cuboid that's a little bit shorter than the walls. Using the scale there, down a bit. And then open up its configuration make the color black, and then in advanced settings, set the roughness up to max and the reflectivity up to max. And then you've got this black void cube. And then what I like to do with these is just move them around, stretch them and duplicate them until I cover the exterior walls. So I'll just do that now. There we go, that's what I'm talking about. Let me just delete this background here, and they blend perfectly into the black background. A couple of last things to do before we're 100% complete here. Let's use the Merge All Tiles macro, just to combine all the tiles in the scene. Lock everything that isn't going to move, like door frames and the pedestal. And then set the max elevation oh, and the background of course and then set the max elevation in the scene settings to something like three so the tokens won't accidentally pop out of bounds or something and with that we are done no external tools required just using stuff inside 3d canvas that we've made this map here and this would look great as part of any campaign Props to Ripper for this great Dungeons & Interiors tool, and for the vast improvements that 3D Canvas has had lately, it's looking much better. As ever, I would love to hear any feedback you all might have about these videos, or 3D Canvas, or the BetaWiki 3D module specifically. 
anything you'd like to see or any issues you're having with them, comment down below or in the Discord. With that then, that's us for, done for today. I'll see you all later.